Good afternoon. Welcome to the 88th Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic. Today's offensive breakout uh, news conference features Ohio State offensive coordinator Brian Hartline and student athletes Devin Brown, Amika Ibuku, Travian Henderson, Xavier Johnson, and Cade Stover. They'll be available across the uh, hallway in Green Room A here in a little bit, so probably here in about 15 minutes or so. Uh, Coach, uh, appreciate you being with us here today. Before we get to questions, uh, we'll go down each player and have you uh, give a comment about each of those young men. We'll start with Devin Brown. Oh, yeah, Devin's uh, been doing a great job. You know, obviously he's in a different role uh, currently than he maybe has been all year. Uh, coming back, also getting a little dinged up uh, during the middle of the season. Uh, was gaining a lot of momentum through the season. But he's having a great bull prep. And uh, we're excited that he's out there. He's got brings a lot of good energy to practice. Uh, the guys are excited to to have him, uh, you know, running the show. And uh, but Devin's done a, a great job uh, preparing for this game. He knows the importance, and uh, his work has uh, resembled that. All right, Amika Ibuku. Amika uh, is doing great. Uh, excited to play in the Cotton Bowl. He, uh, uh, you know, coming off again from an injury uh, earlier in the year. He's feeling really good. I think, uh, you know, for him, there's probably a point where maybe he was a little uh, frustrated on not being, you know, fully to where he wanted to be uh, coming off that ankle. But uh, he looks good, running well, running fast, and uh, excited to play. Travion Henderson? Travion is, uh, looks fast, you know, as, as we always know. Uh, having him out there, uh, it's been different, you know, in the run game. Uh, he, he's a major impact player. Uh, when he uh, when he gets the ball in his hands, uh He's always likely to take it to the house, and uh, we are definitely a better uh, team running the ball uh, when we have Trey in there. All right, Xavier Johnson. Xavier Johnson, uh, you know, jack of all trades, right? I mean, he uh, played a huge part in special teams, he'll play a huge part in the receiver room, play a huge part in the backfield. Um, there's nothing X can't do, and uh, he provides a lot of flexibility because of his skill set. And, uh, yeah, I mean, he, uh, he's definitely going to be a major part uh, of, of, of what we do uh, through this bowl game. Finally, Cade Stover. Cade Stover. Uh, he's, you know, as you, as you guys know, Cade. Cade, uh, you know, he's the back and, you know, backbone, I think, of this offense at times. You know, he is, he's tough. Uh, he plays tough. He wants the, his teammates to play tough. And uh, he sets that standard offensively. Uh, having Cade, uh, in, you know, in the, in the lineup and, and, and playing the way he's played and as productive he's been, how consistent he's been, has been a huge part uh, for our offense. And that says a lot about uh, uh, what Cade's done in the offseason to prepare for this year. Uh, everyone has seen the growth. And, uh, you know, he's, he's one heck of a player. And, and we're, uh, we're lucky and we're glad to have him uh, for this bowl game. Coach, thank you for your comments. Yep. We'll now go to questions. Uh, please raise your hand. Uh, Jason and Matt will get a microphone. We do have a number of media members, so if you'll ask one question, we'll move the microphone. We'll try to get back if you have follow-ups, but let's limit that to one question. We're going to start over here, Coach, on our right-hand side, right in the third row in the middle. Yeah, um, Andy Anders, 11 Warriors. Uh, just circling back to Devin, what, what's the process been like between you and Ryan and Corey to get him ready to go in, in this game? Well, he's put in a lot of good work uh, up to this game, so it wasn't like you're starting from scratch or you didn't know what he, you know, what he was. And so, uh, I think there's probably a heightened awareness on his part, just because he knows, you know, he's the guy now. I mean, that's you know, it, it's just an athlete's perspective. You know, I mean, you say what you want, and you should prepare like you're the guy, but it's still a little different when you are the guy. And uh, you know, he's had that opportunity uh, all the bull prep. Uh, you know, he's gotten better through bowl prep. So uh, I think it's, it's big on us, you know, to make sure, okay, what do we feel like Devin does best? And let's make sure we do that. And, uh, you know, he's, he's, you know, taking the bull by the horn and, and ran with it. So uh, a lot of credit to him. And uh, really excited to see him uh, let it loose on Friday night. Coach will go over here in front of me in the front row. Yeah, Brian, very similar. But it, is it mentally, is it physically, is it the intangibles since Kyle is gone that – you see a change in Devin, other than that awareness. Uh, I don't. I don't know about that. I think that uh, you know. I think it, it changes for everybody, whether it's year to year. It's when, when a guy changes roles, I mean, uh, it, it sparks like you know a different reaction. I, whether it's a wideout or a running back or a quarterback, it doesn't change. I mean, I think that uh, uh, you know when you know 
that you're the guy going out there to do whatever the role is and it's changed, um, it, it kind of asks you to be more intentful. I mean, that's just the reality of it. And uh, But Devin always has his makeup. He's always been the same old, you know, Dev. Dev is – so I, I wouldn't say he's being somebody he hasn't been. It's just uh, a heightened sense of got to go, got to do it now kind of thing. And I think that's, that's pretty common in any athlete that, uh, you know, grows into a different role. Coach, we'll go over to your side of the room over by – Corner. Brian, with it doesn't look like Marv's going to play. Julian's uh, already moved on. Yeah, right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Yeah. Th yeah. This dynamic for your room, I mean, you had this a couple years ago in the Rose Bowl where, you know, Chris and Garrett didn't play. What, what's the opportunity for these younger guys? What, what do you expect to see? What do you want to evaluate on Friday night with that next wave? Yeah, I mean, like, opportunities, right? And so what we do with those opportunities ultimately dictates, you know, the way our career is going to go. That's, that's just – that's the great thing about sports. Uh, yeah, so with a, a couple guys uh, that would be in different roles, a couple guys that will have different opportunities. And, uh, you know, the goal, I, lo I hope a lot of guys get to play. I mean, that's kind of my that's, – that's my hope. So it's a hot building. You can still get stuffy in there sometimes. So a lot of guys got to be ready to play. And uh, based on how the game goes, we'll dictate a lot of that. But uh, I'm really excited for those guys. I mean, that's like you're saying. I mean, there's a, uh, you know – not the first seeing of guys, but like this is the step forward. This is what's coming next year. This is what your role could be if you take it and run with it. Now, nothing's given around here. Uh, everything's been earned. But uh, the whole room in general, I think, is excited. I'm excited. And I, I'm excited to see some of these guys get different opportunities that maybe they haven't gotten through the year. I mean, that's, that's really what prepares these guys to take those steps, chasing Mech and chasing, you know, Marvin Harrison. And just like they did the same with Garrett and Jackson and Chris, that allows them to push and push and push. And then when their time shows up, it seems like it's a lot easier of a transition because they're getting challenged every day. So we're, we're on the uh, the edge of, of seeing some different opportunities, and I'm looking forward to some guys taking it and run with it. Coach, we'll go in front of me straight ahead. Yes. Brian, uh, Jeremy Birmingham, dotting the eyes. The last five years as an assistant that you've been at Ohio State, mm -hmm. college football has changed a lot. Uh, you, to my knowledge, have not brought in any transfers to your room that I can recall. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but has your philosophy on how you recruit changed at all? Are the people uh, – is it more about the mental makeup now than – or obviously physical makeup matters, but is it a different process than it was when you started, and where is it going, do you think? This could be like an hour conversation uh, of the change, as you guys could imagine. Now, that being said, we are very prideful in that, uh, you know, in that mindset of, uh, you know, selecting guys out of high school – and then allowing them to select us. So it's a two-way road. As much as we want them to come here, they have to also pick us. And uh, so that's been good. But those guys that are playing on Saturdays and in bowl games are the guys we have recruited, you know. Um, nothing against the transfer world. I'm not, you know, there's uh, lots of reasons to, be, to do it and have it and use it. Uh, but we have not done that yet in the receiver room, which is, you know, a goal. The goal is to pick out the right high school young men, like you're saying, uh, that fit – our mold and they select us as we select them and and then you see those guys play on Saturdays you know and and I think we're very prideful on uh of the development we've had in our room uh it's always can be better I mean that's it's always it's it's always easy to sit back and try to pick out this or pick out that in any room um whether it be you know doesn't matter any position uh but there has been a lot of pride, at least for in our room that we've talked about loving the the, the fact of of bringing guys in developing them Although tough, I mean, every single guy that you've seen leave, right, into the, uh, into the NFL, um, there's been hard days. And uh, sitting there, I'm not going to expose anybody, but at tears and crying and it's hard and I want to go home and am I good enough to play here, coach, and am I good to play at the next level? Uh, those are hard days. But the end result has been pretty, pretty awesome and very satisfying, for not only as a coach, but uh, as, as, the, as the players themselves. So... Um, yeah, that could be a long conversation, Berm, about everything. Uh, it's constantly changing, and uh, in, in the first two years, we we don't even know. I mean, this is all—it's only been the two years of this, and I can't imagine what it's going to like in five. And uh, so, that being said, um, trying to continue to identify the right guys, develop the right guys, and hopefully see them then chase their dreams uh, from high school through our room into the NFL. It's always always the goal. So very, we're prideful of that, and hopefully we can continue that. 
Coach over to our right with the hat on the top. Yeah, with the hat. Uh, nice Tim May, Lerner Monroe. Nice yeah, nice Brian. Yeah. Uh, how ready is Carnell Tate for this moment? Uh, the defensive players yesterday we were talking to have raved, raved about it, although he's practiced you know, all year, but especially this month. And then number two, what was your uh, initial reaction when Jeremiah Smith said he didn't know until the last two minutes he was picking Ohio State? And I don't know, what did that feel like to, to get that uh, big commitment on signing day? Well, Carnell, let's start there. Uh, I mean, he's played – a lot as a freshman and uh, well deserved. And frankly, it probably would have started a little earlier if it really wasn't, you know, a little dinged up coming out of camp. Had a great camp, but came out dinged up, so it kind of slowed that down. And once he got his feet back under him, I think pretty close to like the bowl, the, uh, the bye week, excuse me, uh, he really started getting going. So um, really excited for him. He's, yeah, he's been ready. I mean, he's been chasing those guys just like, you know, Marv and Mac and some of the guys were all ready, but they were chasing the other guys. And so, uh, if you you know look at our progression, frankly, you know as a freshman, and whether it be Chris or Jackson or Garrett, I mean he's right in that mold, especially production wise. And he and, and Carnell came into a room that was very deep, you know, and so uh, you know have to have four older guys, you know, there, and then you still earning playing time because of your work. And uh, like you said, the defensive guys, uh, peers always know, coaches can say what they want, but the players know. And so you get best uh, uh, reactions and info from players. And, uh, yeah, I'm excited for Carnell in general. Um, as far as recruiting goes, you know, uh, am I allowed to talk about him now because he's signed now? As I get nervous about every rule. I don't know anymore. So uh, I guess I'll say this uh, about Jeremiah. He, he never wavered. His family never wavered. He can say what he wants two minutes before the hat came out. But – you know, he always told me the same thing. His parents always told me the same thing. It's, it's, so it's from his family to him, everything. I mean, the reality of, of college football is you guys see it. And you guys see the clicks and you see the conversations and, and all those kind of things. And, and uh, yeah, that's all I can say. He's been a loyal. His family's loyal. They, are, um, they always did what they said. And uh, I can't thank them enough. And, and I'll tell you, um, I'm really excited for him and, We'll see him here in a couple of weeks. So if that, is it a week? Two weeks, two weeks probably, right? Yeah. So, yeah, very excited. Coach will go straight in front of me, second row. What's going on? Coach Jerry Hamilton from PowerMizzou.com. Um, Chris Abrams Drain, uh, All-American corner. What type of problems does he present to, to your wideouts? And um, where, where does he rank uh, among the cornerbacks you've, uh, you guys played this year? Uh, yeah, I think uh, they do a great job defensively. Uh, I think that uh, they're talented on the outside. I think they do a good. They they run really well. Uh, both guys, one guy more you know uh, heralded than the other, but I have a lot of respect for both. Frankly, uh, I think that our guys do too. Um, you know, anytime we get a chance to play high end defense that we get to play and go against really good DBs. Uh, it's a great opportunity for our guys to see really what we're made of, made of. and uh, I know our guys feel that way. Uh, you know, we also do a good job, I feel like, uh, studying these guys. And so, you know, I'm not going to highlight or bring anything up that may not help us. So, but we have a good feel for them. Uh, we have a lot of respect for them, and our work has reflected that. You know, the way you work always, you know, tells you the most. It shows the most respect, right? And we just hear hear that a lot. So, the guys have been great. They've worked hard. Uh, it's hard to replicate high-end DBs like that. Luckily, we have some here at Ohio State, too. Uh, but on scout teams, that's hard to do. And so uh, we're looking forward to it. We expect a lot of man coverage, frankly. And they have their change up, but that's what they do. And they're prideful of that. So got to beat man-to-man -man coverage and uh, look forward to the opportunity. Coach, we'll go over here in front of you in a while. Nathan Baird, Cleveland.com. Um, go back to Devin. Uh, you're saying the personality has been pretty um, – consistent throughout mm -hmm. just from going back to camp to now what progressions have you seen in terms of fundamentals execution processing those just sort of you know quarterback things yeah I think coming out of camp uh the big conversation was probably consistency right the, the quarterback that was the most consistent was gonna you know uh earn the job or learn the opportunity and that's probably where where, where it was that was probably the difference point and again, I want to speak for uh coach Dennis and coach day but uh that was a big part I've seen that evolve and grow I mean he uh he's done a really good job uh being on target and putting the ball not just 
to the right guy per se, but instead of on the back hip, it's on the front hip, which is a major, which is a major deal. And so, seeing all those grow uh, has been better. I'm sure that's attributed to uh, his fundamentals and his, his release point and everything he's been working on. So, uh, it all plays a part. Uh, but I, I really have enjoyed, again, being in a different role allows you to kind of maybe have your voice and speak up and, and push the guys. It's just a little different, right? I mean, you can be a leader, but it's hard, hard to be a leader if you're not one of the guys. It's just the reality of it in sports. And so uh, when, you're, when your best players are your hardest workers and your starters, they can really drive. And so Dev has always worked hard. Uh, he's, his consistency has continued to grow, and uh, he's got a little more to his, uh, his voice because of the role he's in now currently. So that's what I've seen you know, grow and enhance with Devin. Coach, we'll go in your section in front of you and towards the back, right in the middle. Adam King, 10 TV. Coach, uh, you've pretty much got a whole year under your belt now. It's the offensive coordinator. Curious, what have you learned throughout the season about yourself? I know probably not introspective in a time like this, but you know, how has your role changed? How have you grown as a coach? Yeah, appreciate the question. Uh, no, I'm always like self-reflecting all the time. It's probably my problem. So it's never, uh, you know, it's never good enough. Uh, I don't have every answer that I wish I had, and I'm sure other coaches feel the same way, but that's kind of the, the try the standard I try to carry myself to. Uh, learned a ton. I mean, I think that uh, from a people skills standpoint, I've, I've always kind of had that, so that wasn't necessarily a learning part. I would say, you know, making sure I'm as diverse in my football knowledge and not just a receiver or pass game guy uh, is naturally been there, but the, the demand of myself to be an expert in a different part of the game, you always want to do that, but until you're demanded to do that, it's you know it's a little different, right? So um, I've demanded myself to do that. I think that's grown uh, opi my opinions and uh, my feel of why to do things has grown. I mean, everything is good and uh, and it's gotten better. Um, it's never going to be good enough, so got to balance that. But uh, you know, I'm really just trying to. Uh, be very perceptive of Coach Day and what he do, what he does, and how he operates, and uh, make sure I continue to learn as much as I can from him. Uh, obviously, we have a great staff, even defensively. So, you know, I'm trying to always pick things up from Coach Knowles as well. Uh, but it's been a great first year. Looking forward to growing again in year two. Okay, we'll stay in that middle section, about four rows back, straight ahead of you, Coach. Hey, Brian, yep. uh, Callum McAndrew, Columbia Daily Tribune. Just wondering what some of the, the nuances, key takeaways from Blake Baker's scheme uh, that you've seen in, in your preparation, uh, especially on his third down play calling. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, good defensive structure. I mean, those guys are, are well coached. Uh, you know, I would say that I rarely, I rarely see them out of position. Uh, they've looked you know, pretty tied in communication-wise. Uh, I think that you know, he puts his guys in good positions to uh, be successful of uh, the pressures that he likes to bring. Uh, and, but, you know, it's, it's one of those, one of those defenses where he's getting, getting good calls in at the right times, uh, first the right structures and uh, the guys are playing confidently. You know, there's not a lot of hesitation. They're playing fast, whether it is just some man coverage or whether it is some pressure packages, uh, they've been uh, very sound and uh, I've been very uh, impressed with their defensive structure. Okay. We'll go right up in front of you, coach front row. Right, Bill Rabinowitz from the Columbus Dispatch. Um, related to the, the new duties this year, I don't know exactly how the play calling works. I mean, I, I'm assuming that Ryan's still doing the bulk of that. How has that worked? What, what's your role in that? Or how do you think it's going to evolve in the future? Yeah, uh, yeah. Coach Day is still, you know, head man and rolling. So he's, he's calling plays. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm a big part of that conversation. Uh, especially, you know, I would say the biggest role is probably putting it together throughout the week. Right, and then when you know how it's called uh, on Saturdays is it, that's Coach Day, and so uh, I'm sure it'll continue to grow. Coach Day can answer more of that for you, but uh, you know I think that the adjustments we make at halftime, you know the talking we're having between series and really during the series at times, um, obviously I'm a big part of that. Uh, but uh, we really put it together, together, and then uh, you know he calls it on Saturdays. Yep. Okay, we'll stay in that same section towards the back. Right over by the camera, man. Go ahead. Uh, Brian Spitzer Holbrook, Letterman Row. Uh, with Brandon not coming until June, uh, but then having the bowl practice now, do you see him starting to get to where he needs to be in year one uh, in your room? And then if I can add another one, can you just talk a little bit about Mylon Graham since you talked about Jeremiah? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Brandon's done a good job. You know, anytime you can, 
you come in early, it does give you a leg up. It's just the truth. And more than anything, it's a competitive standpoint. You know, it's hard to come in and take time from a guy that's been there working it. Uh, nothing's ever handed to anybody. And, and although your, your future is very bright, we're still living in the now, right? So Brandon was in a spot where you get in in June, did a great job catching up quickly, frankly. Uh, but a deep room, still learning, and you know to have Xavier and Emeka and have these guys uh, doing a good job, uh, that was really important. You know, Carnell playing a part, and then we having some injuries, and then being able to move Carnell into the slot, and I mean he can do whatever you want to do. So that's a good uh, a good sign of a good player. So. Uh, Brandon's doing everything he needs to do, and I think you know his his future is very bright, and uh, he's showing you know day in and day out. Um, he's a football player, first of all, and uh, he's making a lot of good plays and and uh, communicating and learning. So yeah, very very happy to see what, what Brandon's doing, and frankly with Bryson as well. I mean he's Bryson's really have done a good job, um, continuing to grow, and uh, those two guys uh, really provide a bright future, you know, uh, for the wideout room. And then Mylon, yeah, Mylon. Uh, one heck of a football player, you know, he's – talk about a guy that, you know, knew where he wanted to go, uh, came and saw us a lot, made no uh, uh, gripe about, you know, going anywhere else or whatever. You know, his, his, his process was very different than Jeremiah's, which is fine. They're both right in their own way. And uh, – but uh, very thrilled to have him. Uh, he'd been at camp a handful of times, would come to camp and just work with me multiple times. So I feel like he's already a part of the room. Um, excited to see him in June. He'll be a, a, a June guy. So we'll have to do a good job through the summer catching him up. But uh, he's a quick study. He'll, he'll do a good job. Coach, Thanks we'll for asking about Milan. Sorry, Coach. We'll go no, fr front row again. Joey Coppin, Columbus Dispatch. Hey, Joey. Uh, Brian, with, we've seen Travion out there at practice. How is, is he going to be able to play in the game and just how has he looked in the lead up to this one? Yeah, Trey's look great. Uh, practicing hard. Uh, he knows – you know how important this game is, and uh, yeah, I mean we have a, we have a good uh, good package of, of of thoughts of what we want to get done with Trey, and uh, he's he's done a great job being a leader through bull prep, and uh, you know I know he's we're excited to uh, uh, to let it rip on Friday. Okay, we'll go back over to the right hand side in front of you, Brian. Marv looked like he was being tortured to have to watch you guys practice yesterday um, and today, I guess to some extent. I know how badly he want, wanted to go probably play one more time. Wasn't maybe the best decision for him. What were your conversations like for this this decision making process? And you know, are there similarities to two years ago? Uh, let's see here. How do you know Marv's not playing? I don't know. I guess we'll have to just find out on Friday. Um, Coach Day, Coach Day, Coach Day can hit on that. You know, when when you guys ask, but. No, he was just on the bike, right? I think he was on the bike, keeping his legs warm in between periods, right? Okay. So, um, but that being said, uh, any rep that he doesn't take, he is uh, frustrated and always wanting to be out there on every rep. Uh, it is my job to make sure he doesn't expose himself uh, to any rep that he does not need. So, uh, but as far as, you know, how much playing time and all that, I'm sure Coach Day can iron that out for you guys. But I, you know, Mars ready to, ready to roll if you ask him. So, uh, has he raised the bar in the room? Yes. Uh, the 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 Marv has, you know, Chris, Terry, Johnny, uh, you know, Alston Mack. Those guys set a pretty high bar, you know, and and uh, you know, I would say Chris and Garrett then, you know, started to work to to raise that, you know. And uh, Jackson included, and uh, uh, you know I think that to see Marv come in with Mac and and uh, and see that bar and then raise it again is pretty uh, profound. I would say that the way he did that wasn't just the play. You guys see the play on Saturday, but it's the lifestyle. It's the way he did everything. It's the way he prepared. Um, it's the way he talks. It's the way we in our group chat the the, the messages we put in that group chat. Uh, the reaction to those messages, uh, the conversations, and about elite, you know, players, Kobe's of the world, you know, the moment mentality, and and uh, that's really what's elevated that bar. And and now it's a tall task to have uh, the next guys find a way to raise that bar. Don't know how, but we're gonna have to find a way to raise that bar, and uh, that'll be up to Carnell and 
and, and the group that uh, that will be around next year. Okay, we have two more questions. We'll start in the second row, right in front of you, Coach. Middle. Brian, Andy Bax from Letterman Row. Hi, Andy. Uh, you know, the thing about Lincoln, everyone says it's just the moment hasn't been too big for him this whole time since joining the team in the summer. I guess from a football standpoint, though, like what stands out about Lincoln? How is he pushing Devin right now? And what have you seen from his development during bowl season? Yeah, I mean, Lincoln's continuing to take steps, right? I mean, the biggest thing, I think, on younger quarterbacks is you don't want to be in a spot where – you're taking two steps forward and a step back. It just slows that, right? Just step, nice and steady. Take a step. Take a step. Take a step. Once you do it, check that box. Don't uncheck a box you've already checked, right? I mean, all those kind of things. Now, you know, our uh, our offense is very complex. We ask these guys to handle and do a lot of things. Uh, we'll obviously adjust them to make them fit, you know, for the players. We've done a good job of that uh, through over the years, you know. And so, uh, but uh, we're still going to push them and we're going to ask them to, you know, Handle as much as possible. Um, Lincoln's done that. He's he said he's looked the part. You know, he's a, definitely an athlete. That's well documented. And uh, I think the more and more he can just continually do ball. You know, uh, week in and week out. Another off season will be huge for him uh, to continue to let you know the routine plays be routine. And uh, that just comes with time. And uh, frankly, time doesn't slow, you know stop for anybody. You need to put the time in. So uh, that's coming. He's doing a good job. And uh, again, very bright future. Uh, the way he does things, though, does continue to push Devin, and that's really important. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, coaches can try to push players and suggest and motivate as much as you want, but peer-to-peer -peer motivation is nothing like it. You know, to know there's somebody on my tail, to know I have to bring my A game every single day uh, allows game days to be much easier, and, uh, and Devin uh, and Lincoln are doing that to each other uh, on a daily basis. Okay, our final question is right in front of you in the front section, three yep. rows. Brian Cameron T with The Athletic. I mean, you mentioned Devin earlier about just how much he always prepared to be QB1. Through the year, obviously, he loses the quarterback battle. You guys find the red zone package for him, then he gets hurt. Mm -hmm. How have you seen him fight through kind of the ups and downs of the year as the backup? And then how does that prepare him for a moment like this and, and in the future? Yeah, that can be some of the, the, the hardest and biggest learning you know, moments of a young player's, you know, life. Uh, doesn't matter the position. Obviously, only one quarterback plays, so it makes it even harder there sometimes. So, uh, but, yeah, he's handled it. And, uh, you know, if you were to say, hey, how do you want your career to go, you probably wouldn't paint it this way, you know. But that goes it, – it's doc well documented for all kinds of guys, you know. And so uh, it helps shape them. Everything happens for a reason. Uh, there's a learning – there's a silver lining in all of it, and uh, I think Devin's grabbed that and progressed, you know, to the point to where he's at now. I mean, he's in his spot now, and this is, goes for any player. I bet you there's times where he looks back, and he's probably glad that he was in that competition because the competition then asks you to be the best version of yourself. If you're in a spot where you're not competing necessarily, it's kind of your job. Maybe there's a day that you wasted. You know, I doubt there's a day you can look back that Devin feels like he wasted. So um, everything happens for a reason. Again, I said that already, but uh, I think the path at which he's taken uh, has been given, uh, he's maximized. So uh, that continue the next 48 hours, and he'll look to maximize on Friday as well. Uh, we're excited for him. We're excited about his prep, and I'm excited to you know, see him play on Friday. Coach Hardline, thanks for joining us today. Yes, thanks for having me.